This is episode 30 of Hoops Forum, a production of Radius Athletics and a Quick Timeout podcast. I'm Tony Miller, and I'm joined once again this week by my co-host, Randy Sherman. Thanks to our sponsors over at 323 Sports. Right now, they're offering several options on team packs, including one for under $100. Includes a jersey, shorts, tee, and a backpack. To find out more about what 323 Sports can do for your sports program, just email sales at 323sports.com. They'll be sure to do it right for your sports program. This is the third episode in our series on the pack line defense. Last week, we discussed the finer points of closeouts as well mm-hmm. as ball screen defense. By the way, you can go back and watch the full episodes of that on Radius Athletics. Just search Radius Athletics on YouTube. There are the full versions there. Randy, welcome back. You ready yeah. to talk some more pack line defense? Let's do it, man. It's been fun. It's a, it's a subject that I've, I've had to learn because I didn't have a lot of experience coaching it, but feel like feel like an expert after these three uh, sessions so let's go today we're going to talk and get dig into post defense as has been the case in this series we're using a lot of visuals so we've had some presentations with each of the episodes that have some um, teaching bullet points some game film is also also some drills and some small sided games for you to use with your teams so if by chance you're just listening to this episode you may want to go back and watch parts of it there like we talked about on the YouTube page Randy, I, I know defense is an important part. Post defense is mm-hmm. an important part to any defensive system. Uh, kind of though, I feel like maybe within the pack line, it, it maybe is even a little bit more important. And in regards to the bigs and the forwards, like we saw last week with the ball screen defense, it just feels like they're more involved and it's part of the system that if you don't do it well, you can really get burned. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think, pay- the the defense's uh, main tenet is to sort of take away the easy shots from an opponent, and and the post play a major role. The post defenders play a major role in that, and and executing what they're coached to do uh, perfectly um, is a big task. And they have to be active and mobile and strong and physical and and uh, and willing to sort of do some hard things. So I agree, hundred percent. Let me go ahead and slide over here to the presentation. There's really four things that we want to talk about uh, today. We'll go through each of these on their own, but just to kind of introduce them, Randy, why don't you kind of talk through these four things, and then we'll get going into each of them on their on their own. Okay, the post box. I think we we in our very first talk about pack line, we we had a diagram that showed what that is. But just just think of the area around the blocks in the in the lower part of the lane as as what we would describe as the post box and and we want to keep the ball out of there uh, using a little bit of three quarter three quarter front fronting um, with post defense um, keep the ball out of there of course the 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 things we talked about with the, with the helping in the gaps and things like that is to keep it from getting into that post box via the dribble but today we'll you know three quarter fronting We'll talk about you know when the ball is entered in the post box. It's, it's going to happen. We're not going to keep it out of there all night long or all season long. That they're going to enter. The, they're going to enter the post. Uh, um, when it when it does get into that post box via post entry, our mission then becomes to get it out of there. And 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 obviously secondary to to not giving up a layup, but but get the ball out of there when when it's when the ball is entered into the post box. Walling up simply refers to sort of keep if the ball is entered into the post and you're caught behind the the uh, the, uh, the the postman who, who received the entry, um, kind of kind of forming uh, I call it thumbs and ears. Put your thumbs in your ears and get your hands up and 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 use your chest and body to sort of create a wall between ball and, and basket. So with, with your with your body and your size. And, um, so yeah, and and keep that wall moving as the player makes um, post moves and things like that. So um, choking the post refers to when the, uh, the defender of the feeder. So if I'm guarding the guy who feeds the post um, and, and my teammate who's on post defense is, is is caught behind um, I might choke sort of, sort of squeeze that space between the feeder and the, and the postman by, by sort of choking down the space with the post, the kind of stunting or jabbing at the post, not quite a full double team with the, with the feeders defender, but just, just taking away some of the space. 
if he wants to turn towards the middle, I'm kind of choking down to take away that middle turn, things like that. Um, but it's it's just getting a little help from the feeder's defender to, to to close some space, maybe swipe at the ball if a big, you know, brings it down too far or something like that. But but not quite a double team, but just a little stunt and a little space closure from the feeder's defender. And post traps, we'll look at examples of those where if the ball, if maybe we're playing an exceptional post player who who's a real problem, so we 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 want to get the ball out of that post box. We're going to make them a passer and, and take away their ability to score by double teaming with with typically Virginia to refer to them does it with their other postman. So when you think traditional one two three four five, maybe fives on post defense. Four would be the double teamer and vice versa. If four was on post defense, five might be the double teamer. So um, yeah, those are the four components I think we're going to explore today. First week, I, I suggested coaches, if you don't do this already, that you put down the lines that we have here on the mm -hmm. screen, whether that's your pack line, putting down the dashed line, or even marking off the post box, just to really help players kind of visualize that. Yep. I think one of the benefits, too, of if you really teach your players well to deny and eliminate any catches there in that post box, it really does shrink the floor because if everyone else is doing their job, you've eliminated essentially the corners, the top two corners of the court. Mm -hmm. and then you're also eliminated whatever option they have to throw it into the post box. Mm -hmm. That that limits what the offense can do. Yeah, with just basically kinda... the, the middle middle third of the floor there, um, which is why I felt like it really helped our team that wasn't very athletic. Mm -hmm. It shrunk the floor and it gave us a better chance when we were playing with not as athletic and, shorter players yeah that that's one of the better explanations that i've heard so i'm glad you shared that of 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 sort of like your defensive spacing like like we we think of spacing in terms of offense but in defense the commandment is to restrict space right so you know offense wants to expand and use space defense wants to stri restrict space and and all these things like you know using the post box and and, and not allowing catches there and and your stance angle that we talked about in previous episodes like that's a, that's an excellent explanation of, of restricting space with your defense mm -hmm. all right let's go ahead and do talk about walling up here okay uh, show it through some video and then maybe break down some yeah of just before you play points. the video the the photo there mm -hmm. is a really good example like the, the the thumbnail of the youtube you can see he's beginning to raise his arm gets thumbs and ears and and is and is kind of using his chest, his torso, if you will, to to sort of uh, wall up the 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 uh, the defender with the ball there, or the offensive player with the ball there. So yeah, the, the photo is a good example. Yeah, also, sure. all right. So yeah, so here we're caught behind, um, but but one thing you'll see him immediately sort of pop back, put thumbs and ears. And, you know, the big thing, he's showing the official his hand, so he's not getting, gonna, you know, he's not risking getting a, a, a slap down call on him or something like that. Um, the big thing that I, I note is just how active his feet are. And he's not, and, and as the guy's making moves and trying to go up and under, um, I think the teaching phrase Virginia uses is be a wall on wheels. So, like, I've got my hands up, and as the guy's trying to make moves, I'm just sort of, like, like moving that wall um, to stay between ball and basket mm -hmm. showing the official my hands and just trying to wall up and be and be big and and tough to score over mm -hmm. and tough to turn around on and things like that so uh, yeah good examples there a couple of things that i notice i've communicated it to players and it seems to have helped is to teach them to get in that big x position big the x, wider yeah. that your legs can get without limiting your mobility like you just yeah. said then also getting your arms big and wide as well allows you to be hard to spin off of. For mm -hmm. some reason, a lot of post defenders will go narrow, and that's when they get spun off or start, of. Or start um, leaning and, and putting body weight, and then you just the, – the, a good defender just uses that for leverage. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a good that's offensive a, player. Yeah, that's a great point. Like, it, our, the Virginia players, you notice, are they're vertical. There mm -hmm. is no leaning forwards. Um, there's really even no, like, banging. Any kind of banging is coming into them. And they don't even give the guy much space. I mean, they do go chest to chest to shoulder with a lot of these guys. I don't know if anybody remembers back, like Duke had a guy, Sheldon Williams. He was an incredible shot blocker. And I think one of the things that really helped him was the fact that his hands were already prepared up nice and high. And most 
post players don't play like that for some reason. Yeah. Um, I think it helps you, prepares you to rebound a basketball. It helps mm-hmm. you to contest the shot. I noticed that. That was another key point is that they don't actually go narrow, but they'll try to contest and block the shot with one hand. They don't, they, they'll jump. You've got that infinite from the ground to the ceiling thing. So you can avoid fouls. There's just like a lot of, I feel like a lot of positives that come by just teaching those few small micro skills. Yeah, and if you look at it from the offense perspective, which which is just something I can't help but do, and 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 uh, a lot of the the shots in these clips end up being because of the physicality of the Virginia defenders, they're holding their space, using their torso to wall up. You know, a guy ends up taking a contested turnaround two point shot outside the paint. That's like the lowest analytic mm-hmm. shot you can design. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, next one here. Let's go ahead and talk about choking the post here. So moving on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, so here you're going to see the, the defender guarding the, 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 the guard who feeds the post. Um, just sort of using a little bit of, of stunting and timely swipes and things like that to, to disrupt the, uh, the, the post player's move. So, yeah, so there, there we've got a guy walled up. The ball's been entered into the post. And the, and the guy guarding double zero, the the, the feeder, um, gonna gonna choke down a little bit. Let's see if we can find another example here. Yeah, so see how he kind of just chokes down, and he's there to just sort of pester the guy. <laughs> Number eleven, just choking, just confining that space without fully committing to a double team, and just giving the guy a little bit of something to think about before he makes a hard turn to the middle. You sometimes get some steals and deflections off of it, just like the Absolutely. last clip there. Yeah, maybe your teammate turns him back into you and you're there waiting to swipe it. Um, yeah. I feel like it's just another factor for the offensive player to have to think about. Like he doesn't necessarily know exactly when you're coming, so that can sometimes cause him a little bit of hesitation to maybe – but if you don't give any kind of resistance, there's no choke. We call it a dig, but like if there's no dig, then he really has – potentially the ability to go left or right. Yeah. It's kind of almost kind of keeps him guessing a little bit and just adds another factor into his thinking that he has to think about. So one thing that I would point out that, um, that a little subtle teaching point that I don't, I don't see Virginia doing, but I, I, it was something I picked up along the way on that when you're choking the post or digging, like you called it is dig with your palm up rather than palm down and sort of like, think of like, because that, that's just sometimes they're going to get a foul called on you. A guy brings the ball up through and you're swiping down. But sometimes if you'll just dig in there with palm up and a, a postman will bring the ball down and bring the ball right to your hand and you just pop it up and, and dislodge it that way. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Um, let's see here. This is not necessarily, I mean, you can call it a small side of game if you want to, but we will sometimes, this is an early on drill that we'll use. So just with two on two, we'll have a coach enter the ball into the post. And then on the catch, we may choke the post. Um, you could even use this. We're we'll talking a minute about like doubling the post. If you want to kind of go practice doubling the post, depending on where you're sending your doubler from, but um, just making sure that, like you said, you're checking for that. They're not over committing sometimes. Like you don't want to, go dig or even go all the way down too far and leave a good shooter open out there. That was one thing that our, our guys sometimes struggled with. They'd get too aggressive on the digs or the chokes and it would lead to a long closeout and an open three for the offense. Yeah. So just checking their position. You can also check the uh, post defender to make sure he's walling up with the right technique and then just play live two on two in a seven second session or something mm-hmm. like that and flip it. You got an easy small side of game there. Yeah, and on, from the offensive perspective, we could work on post technique. We could and and enter and relocate a good a good concept, just general offensive concept. If I enter the post, don't don't stay where I entered it from. Move, you know. If the guy is choked down, and then I've relocated somewhere, maybe he turns his head, and I'm not where he left me. So so uh, I could get an inside out kick out that way um so yeah you're working offense and defense here um and punishing a team that maybe gets a little over committal with choking and double teaming so yeah i think most probably co- coaches uh observe this in the video but 
uh, we used to teach actually like get your butt. So X one there, get your butt to the baseline and make sure that you can see your man and also see the basketball. So we don't want to over committing over over committing to the post player and turning our back on a, on a player and he cuts, does a Laker cut or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you miss him. I noticed that Virginia, they don't, Several times they didn't do when the ball was entered from the wing. They didn't do butt to the baseline, but they did like butt to the elbow. Mm-hmm. But in both cases, you're not, like I said, turning your back on your man, which can obviously lead to bad things. Yeah, just keeping split vision where I can see ball and man, and 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 not getting too man or ball conscious. Yeah. Okay, and this is another choke in the post situation you can use. Yeah, just a very similar type drill, just. I think I called this two two v two choke, where you're going to enter it, choke with the choke with the feeders defender, working on all the same things, um, and um, you know relocating the guard who fed the post. So it's an offense defense drill, um, and you can advance it too to where it's it's once it once it uh, you know once it goes in comes back out it's live you know something like that. So um, working on on all the post techniques we talked about, all the choking techniques we talked about into two V two live on the kick back out. We can, you can teach your post how to like, you know, post and seal, you get a catch, you make a move or two, you don't get it. You throw back out, you repost. So, um, you know, just playing the two man game from, from wing and post and, and, and post defense with the wing and, and post defender. And the last point here, post traps, what should they look like and how should we play out of them? Man, I think this is probably the most just beautiful thing to watch them do when they when they're on with this and 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 really commit to it. Um, yeah, the post traps just sort of brings it all together. The on ball defender, the the post defender. Um, the way I taught post doubles um, would be don't if I'm the on ball defender. And I know we, we've got in the game plan or something, we're going to double this guy when he gets it in the post or this girl when they get it in the post. Um, the on-ball defender is just don't let him turn baseline. The, the, the trapper is don't let him turn middle. So, like, he tries to drop step baseline, and he turns right back into that double teamer, and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, we form a, a really tight post trap. And, again, the mission is when the ball got in the post box, get it out. This is a nine one one emergency, and if it's a really good player, a good a good a good a good uh, big guy that they, they our opponent has, we want to get it out, get it out, make someone else beat us, or or um, or you know you're what you're doing is if maybe also is you're forcing a guy who probably doesn't do a lot of passing and seeing and assessing the floor have to be a passer out of a double team, have to find skip passes and cutters and things like that, that, you know, when you put two on the ball, someone's open, but you're, you're making a guy who's not used to finding, uh, finding open teammates out of a double team, make that decision. And to your point, I think Virginia makes it even harder on that guy when they send the other big who then obviously because of his height, and then you put your arms up in the air, makes it even taller, really yeah. takes away vision for that post player. Yeah. So man, they spring these, their timing is good. Um, these are all, you know, quintessential examples yeah and the timing he you can tell he knew it was his job and he's just kind of waiting on it to go in there and they and you know it's important you see the two labels on the screen there that that the the you know we get nail and rim um from the from from the the off the players outside of that trap too and um yeah, the timing of these, and again, they 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 don't really stay on it too long. You know, they kind of get on it and get off. I think traditional post uh, pack line post defense. If you take a dribble away, which was I think was the last clip. Yeah. Okay. But if you take a dribble, this is the clip before that. So give it one more. Yeah. If you take a dribble away, you take just a dribble. Leave. Yeah, like yeah. you. That calls Mission off the double. The ball's not in the post box now. He dribbled out of that space, yeah. And really key, having the guy that's protecting the rim dropping down to the front of the arc there so that you can take away any cutters and then also so you don't get cut back door on the weak side here. Yeah, so nail and rim to, to protect any rip cuts, yeah. And they go right away and they go quick. They know it's coming. They, they know – 
and, and they're well drilled, I'm sure, at this and 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 uh, you know approach with your hands high so you you know if the guy feels it and he turns and he feels you coming you've already got your hands high so you can uh, maybe get a deflection that might force one of these interceptions we're seeing here and here's wisconsin they always have a good big so you know that the double team plan was was in there and now both guys kind of show that wall on wheels technique of, of of big x thumbs and ears you know using your torso to close down that space um, another point I would say that like the absolute just just cannot do is if we get a guy in a post trap, we've closed all the space. We're belly button to belly button. Like don't foul. Like mm -hmm. don't slap down. You know this is this is a real disadvantageous spot for the offense. Let's don't let them off the hook. Like they're gonna turn it over. They're gonna th we're gonna get a deflection turnover. Convert defense to offense. Don't foul on a trap. <laughs> mm. All right. Small side of game here, again, just with the coach throwing it in there and allowing the pass to be thrown in. And then as soon as the ball goes in, then you can go ahead and rotate. Uh, you mentioned to me, I mean, we talked about the the X4, the other post going and trapping. Have you ever seen anybody else, different different player go? I mean, some teams do it from the feeder, um, you know, that, that – um, you know, we want to double the post. Well, that front with whom? With whom? Right. So some te some teams may do it with the feeder. Not a real big fan of that, but um, okay. You know, I think you know you've got your you've got your rule. You can stick to it. You can quickly execute it effectively. Then it's a good rule. You know, so some some folks do it with the feeder. Some you know, as offensive players move around, it may not be. So sometimes um, I, what I've seen is, is what I, you know, that help side I, where you see X4 and X3 right there here, it happens to be the other forward. But like if they were inverted and three was high, is some coaches sometimes say, we're going to double team from top I, the top, that help side I, those two defenders on the help side, whoever's in top I, you're going to go because you're just taking away the middle turn. You're, you're naturally there. So yes, I have seen other things other than like a personnel entity like the other forward it's been the feeder or top eye yeah that's good uh we have before done it was back to personnel base but i had a point guard who was really tall really long was a great double teamer and we'd send our point guard um down and what i typically found is like other teams point guards aren't used to their man leaving yeah and they're so, like whoa yeah. yeah it just it almost kind of froze the their offense and put them at a real disadvantage yeah. Um, if it was on the same side, so like in this scenario, we wouldn't go and double with our one. I assigned a second guy. So if you were on the same side as the post, we didn't want to leave the corner shooter. So we would have a second second assigned player, whether that was X3 or X4, and he would go double. Yeah. Um, that does take a lot of practice, but it can, be, uh, it can be very valuable if you have somebody who the offense is not used to having their man go and double to go mm -hmm. double with that guy. So, yeah, yep. some good thoughts with that. Um, anything else here at the end? I, I think that was that was pretty in-depth. We wanted to keep it kind of go deeper on one topic here. But yeah. like I said, I just think a big – we had to drill this a lot, but I thought it was a big part of the overall defense. You know, even as something, that, something as simple as making sure that they are denying on the high side so that you're funneling everything down into your post player and he's in the right spot. Mm -hmm. But uh, rotating out of it on the backside if, if, you know, if you have that – kick out and that kind of thing. But so there are some more things in addition to this, but I, I thought that those four things were probably the most important things we covered today. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say on, on the two things that we talked about, the choking and the, and the post traps, the post doubles it, it's timing is everything, you know, we, we're with that post double, we're wanting to kind of have uh, an element of surprise where the, 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 the player who, who we just entered it into, you know, kind of turns himself into trouble because we, we spring this trap on him with, with good timing. Um, the choking, same thing, good timing, you know, don't mm -hmm. overcommit. And, and I think something that you work on daily and just sort of let players get a feel for, you know, that's, you know, like you talked about not getting too man or ball conscious and, and on the timing of the traps, just, just springing it like right, right at that right time, just mm -hmm. take some practice and, and, uh, and, you know, I would say, too, that like 
one thing that, you know, I have a little experience with Dublin in the post um, coaching that, um, that I noticed as we did it was, was the, the turnover that we're hoping to elicit. It's probably not going to come from one of the two guys on the ball. So like I had to kind of like, I, in my case, the, 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 the young, the young women I coached, like keep them from like, we're, we're not sending you to trap to steal it. So, you know, easy with the slapping and the, and the reaching and all that. We're just sitting you on a trap to take away vision and, and make this player pass out of the double team. Now, I do want those hands up, and if we can get a tip, a deflection coming out of that, then that just yeah, – man, we're off to the races probably on with a deflection. You know, what I wanted to do when I'm keeping stats is deflection, steal, deflection, steal, deflection, steal. So we bring the post trap, one of those two trappers with hands high, gets a little tap on the ball, and and – and we we scoop and score. So, for anyone that's coached packline, you know, I think the biggest thing that I hear from packline coaches very hard to generate turnovers and steals out of it. And post defense with traps is one of the easiest ways to to jump those back up. Like you said, it's not necessarily the doubler who's going to even get the steal, but that deflection and then the guard getting on the perimeter may generate you you know, two or three more turnovers a game that you wouldn't necessarily get just running regular pack line defense. So, yeah, I know I said this once, but I say it again, don't foul on the trap. Don't mm -hmm. foul on the trap. Like that's a very vulnerable position for the offense. Don't let's don't let them off the hook. We can maybe get, get them in trap for five seconds, get them, you know, get a deflection turnover. Like don't foul. Mm -hmm. That's difficult too, because you're coming down with such speed that, and they're, they're <laughs> aggressive and they want to get to it. Uh, overshooting it too. So even if you don't commit the foul, I've had some that end up pushing mm -hmm. a player out of the wrong right position, which leaves somebody wide open. So just making sure that you're, it's almost like a closeout, right? Yeah. Choppy feet. So maybe yeah. chop down into it. Bring, approach it, things. approach it aggressively, but under control, hands high. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate all of you who joined us this week. Before we go, we just want to tell you about our sponsors over at Sideline Interactive. If you're looking to increase your school's revenue or improve the look of your gym, Sideline Interactive, they're the leading manufacturers and scoring tables and video display boards at high schools and colleges around the country. To find out more about Sideline Interactive and what they can do for your program, visit sidelineinteractive.com. Again, for the full episodes of this, make sure that you go to YouTube, type in Radius Athletics, and if you type in Packline, you'll find all of the episodes that we've had here on the Packline defense. We may squeeze one more in next week. Randy and I will talk about it here. It's been a fun series to kind of dive into. If you have something I know as the basketball season approaches and you start preparing your teams, there may be a topic that you want us to discuss. And thinking about this too, Randy, maybe we even have maybe one or two people on here with us and sure. um, they can ask live questions or contribute some to it. After all, it is hoops form, so we can maybe uh, introduce a couple more people into it. Absolutely. Randy, really appreciate you joining us and for all the insights you've given. Thank you. Talk to you again next week on hoops form. <laughs>